Tis good, Lord, to be here. Thy glory fills the night. Thy face and garments like the sun shine with unborrowed light. Tis good, Lord, to be here. Thy beauty to behold, where Moses and Elijah stand, thy messengers of old. Fulfiller of the past, and hope of things to be, we had thy body glorified, and our redemption see. Before we taste of death, we see thy kingdom come. We long to hold the visions bright, and make the hill our home. Tis good, Lord, to be here, that we may not remain, but since thou bidst us leave the mount, come with us to the plain. Amen. Amen. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here today, guys. Good Bible study today once again, I think, right? Yeah, great. Continuing with our uh, discussion on confirmation, it was good stuff. A good discussion is going on. And thank you for everybody that's watching today. My prayer is that the Lord blesses you in all that you do. And you hear his word from uh, our message here in the chapel of St. Martin's this morning. Let's begin on this 25th Sunday of Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. My brothers and my sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us confess our sins to God and one another. Most merciful Father, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what I have done and by what I have failed to do. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. I am truly sorry, and I humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me and forgive me. And in your compassion, renew me with your Spirit, so that cleansed of my sins and strengthened for your service, I may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon us and forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And through the Holy Spirit, bring us to everlasting life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <sighs> Glory to God in the highest and peace, peace to his people on earth. Lord, Lord God, God, Heavenly King, King Almighty God, God and Father. We, we praise you, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful Father, your holy law is founded upon love of you and love of one another. Help us in our daily life to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you, that we may inherit the everlasting life you promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And this is the first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is, in, while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are the ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. This, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is a responsible psalm. Every day will I bless you. And I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. His greatness is unresearchable. The Lord is gracious and merciful. Slow to anger and of all greatness, kindness. And of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. Amen. The second reading, a, re a letter, a letter, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ, and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I will choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Open your hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. God is good. Amen. 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 The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. And after agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard, going out about nine o'clock. The landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off and went out again around noon, and around three o'clock he and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. Then he said to them, you too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more. But each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to them in reply, My friend, I'm not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first and the first will be last. 
This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> God is good, amen? Amen. Amen. Let's all stay awake today. <laughs> what a wise guy, huh? <laughs> Rub his eyes. I'd like to read one verse from Matthew chapter 20 and verse 13. Matthew 20 and verse 13. Says, Jesus says, but he answered one of them and said, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Let's pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, I thank you for this day, O Lord. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Lord, that we can share the company of each other today and learn from each other through the truth of your word, through what we say even how we banter one another sometimes. But, oh Lord, I pray that in all things, our goal is to be more like you, to grow closer to you through the study of your word. That's why we come, and that's what we want to learn today, to be closer to you, and how to take what you teach us and put it into practice in our thoughts and in our life. We pray these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Once again, Jesus says, but he answered one of them and said, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? The title of today's message is, What Did You Expect? What did you expect? Let me ask you a question. When you serve God, what do you expect? You're trying to get something out of it? You think you should get something out of it? You think you should get more out of it than the next guy because you think you did more than the next guy. Right. You know, we live in a, a day today when more and more of the world's ways are creeping into the church. Would you agree with that? Yes. I see it all the time. I think we would all would agree. It's one of the things we talked about in Bible study today. I mean, all the way from music to culture to wages of church workers. I'm thinking equal pay for equal equal work, right? That's what people want today. Even in the church, it's sad today when pay for ministry plays such a big role in the church as it does today. So do we pass up a ministry calling or a ministry opportunity to serve people based on pay or how much time we got to put into it? Or what we think it's going to cost us to do these things? Well, let's figure it out in the parable Jesus told in the day today. In this parable, Jesus compares a landowner and his laborers to the kingdom of God. That's the point. The point is the kingdom of God. And he uses laborers and a landowner. The landowner needed some work to be done, didn't he? So he went out and he walked around the streets and he saw a bunch of guys standing around first thing in the morning. And he asked them to go out and work in the fields for the day. And he said, and I will pay you a day's wage, a denarius, the scripture talks about. I'll pay you a day's wage. And at the third hour of the day now, about 9 a.m., first group was about 6 a.m., now about 9 a.m., he saw other guys standing around. And he said, hey, why don't you guys go out and work in my vineyard? I've got to work for you, and I'll pay you what's right. I'll pay you the day's wage. And so about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, which would be noon and 3 p.m. in the afternoon, he did the same thing. He went out there to the marketplace. He saw a guy standing around. He said, hey, you guys want to work? And they said, sure. So he sent him out into the field, and he said, I'll give you what is right for pay. And at the end of the day... It says about the 11th hour, or about 5 p.m., he did the same thing. Saw a guy standing around, said, go out into the, into the field to work. And he found those who needed to work for him, 
throughout the day. And he said, I'll pay you guys what is right. And when it came to get paid, the workers that only worked for one hour of the day came in and they got a full day's wage. They got their denarius. Well, the others got mad because the guys that worked the full day came to get their pay and they got the same amount of money that the workers got at the end of the day. I mean, does that make sense? I worked for 12 hours and I got $10 and you worked for only one hour and you got $10. Is that fair? No. No, we would say that's not fair. And I would have to agree with you. We don't think that's fair. So how does that fit into the church? How does that really fit into it? Or does it? Well, I think it does. See, when we believe in Christ and we grow in our faith, the, Lord's ex the Lord expects us to follow him. Did you get that? He expects us to follow him. And, we expect, and we're expected to follow him, not for some reward, but simply because he said, follow me. For the greatest reward we have is Jesus himself. Would you agree with that? Right. Yes. That's the greatest reward. And we can even get so busy serving the Lord for some reward that we miss out on Jesus himself and miss him altogether because we're too busy trying to get some sort of reward. See, guys, we're not in the service of God for money. We do not do more to get more. That's one of the points Jesus tries to make in the parable today. The guys that said, I work more, I should get more. Jesus ends up saying, no, that's not how it is. Because we're not in it to get more. I once sat at a meeting many years ago at a church, and they said to the, they said to the head priest there, we want you at this board meeting, we want you to start going to the hospitals now and make hospital calls. And the first thing out of his mouth is, well, then you're going to have to pay me more. <laughs> so we struggle with that even in our church today. If that's the case, if we serve God more only to get more, then our service really becomes a job, doesn't it? Yes. Especially for pastors and priests in the church today. When these guys worked in the vineyard, Whatever they were called, they came to get paid, and they all got the same amount. And we agreed that's not fair. That's not right. Well, if we look at things from the kingdom of God in Christ's perspective, it's absolutely okay. Listen, the rich man who owned the vineyard paid them. And he paid them from his own money, right? right. He set the amount of what he's going to give them. He didn't give them what was theirs. He gave them what was his. And they agreed upon working for the day, whether it was a lot of hours or a little hours, for a certain amount of money. Well, let me ask you, what does God promise to all who believe in Christ? What does God promise? Does he promise us riches? Does he promise us, us health all the time that we're never going to get sick? Does he promise to give us everything that we want? No, he promises us a place in heaven. He promises us eternal life at his right hand. Nice. The Bible says this is the promise he made to us, eternal life. That's the promise he made. Some will realize that promise through much labor in their life for Christ and much suffering in their life for Christ. Some will realize that promise through little labor for Christ and little suffering. When we're called by the Lord to believe in God and work for Him, then our work begins when we believe and we move forward with the assurance of everlasting life. We're not promised all the wealth and riches of this world as we follow the Lord, and we're not promised to get more stuff because we think we serve God more. So the question becomes, for all of us here today in this room, and everybody out there, is this. Do you work hard for the Lord? Do you work hard for the Lord? Is the call he has given you in this life 
breaking you to the point where you simply rejoice and are glad that God has called you. For it is God who is at work in you, the Bible says, preparing you to receive the reward in heaven. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. To get our reward in heaven. That's our greatest reward. Now, we do not serve God and labor for him in order to receive a reward. That's not our motivation. We're motivated to love God and serve for him because he saved us through his son Christ. We labor and work for God out of love for Jesus. And if that's our motivation, love for Jesus, we would not even take into account how much God has compared the things I do with what he has wants someone else to do. Make sense? Mm -hmm. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10, the Bible says, God is not unjust to forget your work and the love which you have shown toward his name in ministering and in still ministering to his saints. God never forgets what we do for him. He always remembers. He looks at what we do and how we serve him, and he promises to take care of us every single day in all of our life. Looking around this room, we don't all have the same amount of stuff, do we? We don't all have the same income. We don't all have the same desires or the same things because God has given us what he deems is best for us. And what we think is unfair with God, God says is absolutely fair. Because, friends, our reward is not in this life. Our reward is in heaven above. Amen. We are motivated by love, doing what God has already preordained for us to do. God has work for me to do. Billy's got work for you to do. Marky's got work for you to do. And everybody watching, he's got work for you to do. And just like in the parable, the owner of the vineyard, called workers at different times of the day. So the Lord calls us out at different times in our life. To do what? To believe in Him. To follow Him. To live for Him. And always remember, it's God who calls you. Just like in the parable, the workers did not go to find a job. The owner came to find the workers and said, Go do these things, and you will receive the reward. What's our reward at the end of this life? It's being with Christ forever. We come to him tired at the end of our working day, tired and dirty with sore hands and sore legs, open to him that he may fill us with his blessing. And his blessing is his presence. And these blessings are not necessarily good things or the goods of this world, but the gift of everlasting life through Christ our Lord. The key is to trust the Lord, who will reward us openly as we live and serve for him and be content with what he provides. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you, Almighty God, for this gift that you've given us. Help us, Lord, to serve you, to look in ways to honor you with our life. Help us not worry about what we have or what we don't have, or what we may even have to give up in service to you, O Lord, for our reward is in heaven, for you promised to meet us face to face. Father, I thank you for this day and ask your blessing upon us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join together in the words of the Nicene Creed that we have on our worship folder before us. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, and of all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all ages, God of God, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Hear us, good Lord, as we pray for all people, that wars may cease throughout the world, that nations may live in unity, peace, and accord, and that freedom might be extended to all people. Your response is, hear us, good Lord. Okay. That your pity would be manifest among all prisoners and captives, the homeless and the hungry, and all who are desolate and oppressed. Hear us, good Lord. Lord. Given preserve to our use the bountiful fruits of the earth, so that in due time we may all enjoy them. Hear us, O Lord. Inspire us, whatever our vocation, to do work you have given us with singleness of heart as your servants and as for the common good. Hear us, O Lord. Lord. Preserve all who are in danger by reason of their labor or their travels. Hear us, O Lord. Preserve and provide for all women in childbirth, young children and orphans, the widow, and all those whose homes are broken or torn by strife. Hear us. Hear us, O Lord. Visit the lonely, strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, and comfort with your presence those who are sick and dying. Hear us, O Lord. O Lord. Support, help, and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. Hear us, O Lord. Have mercy upon the whole human race. Hear us. Hear us, O Lord. Son of God, we beseech you to hear us. Son of God, we beseech you to hear us. Lord, have mercy. Hear us, O Lord. Christ, have mercy. Hear us, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Hear us, O Lord. Let's join now in our own personal petitions that we might want to bring before the Lord. Lord, we just thank you that we can gather here in fellowship and and freely hear your word. Many nations that can't do that, North Korea, Arab countries. So we thank you for that, God. And we pray for those who aren't able to hear your word or don't have the freedom to worship you. Yeah, we just ask that you just watch over them and strengthen them for the church death the underground church in, in many countries. We pray for them. We also pray for our pre-born neighbor, those who have no protection, Lord, that are, are going to be carried away to the slaughter. And we also pray for the women who might be thinking that, that they will have an abortion, Lord. And we pray that you would just change your mind. And those women who have had them, Lord, that we would not condemn, but we'd be a place of reconciliation for them and a place of healing. And because we are all sick and we have all mm. have, have gone astray. There is none that good yeah. does good. There is none that seeks after God. And we would have become as Sodom and Gomorrah if it wasn't for your mercy and your grace, Lord. 
we just thank you. We can't thank you enough, God, because we deserve to burn in hell. But you saved us because of your mercy and grace. We thank you. Praise God. I, I, I walk a lot. I walk a lot downtown in Milwaukee in the east side. And I see a lot of the homeless. And it just breaks my heart. And uh, I also want to thank God for finally putting me in the right direction and, mm -hmm. and having the will and the fortitude to just keep moving forward. Even a lot of stuff that I do is kind of uncomfortable. I don't want to do it. And uh, I think he's got some good things in store for me if I'm willing to to work for him and to and to persevere. And just, just, we got to do something about the homeless problem in Milwaukee. That's all I'm going to say. So thank you, God. <clears throat> Father, I pray today, especially for our community here at St. Martin's. Lord, thank you that we grow so much spiritually over time. You've given us the gift of your Holy Spirit to learn from your word, to believe, to accept. We thank you for the growth that you've given us. We pray today also for Ed, for Greg, for Jack. We pray for James. We pray for Abby. All those that are really struggling right now. We can pray for ourselves, for we too struggle. We all need your strength. We all need your spirit. And Lord, we, may we find peace in you. And help us know we don't have to understand everything, but find peace in you. We pray, O oh Lord, in the name of the Father, Son, Son and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Lift up your hearts. Yeah, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks and praise to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father, all powerful and ever living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. For you are the source of life and life. You have formed us in your image, and you have called us now even to new life through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the saints of every time and place, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your holy name. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <laughs> Father most holy, you are worthy of praise, for in Jesus your Son you reveal the depth of your love. Through him you have liberated us from our slavery to sin and death and made of us a family where your boundless gifts are revealed. Invited by his love, we have gathered at this altar, and we give you thanks for these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine. Sanctify them now by the power of your Holy Spirit, that they may become for us the body and the blood of your most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On the night before his death, while at supper with his disciples, Jesus took bread. He said the blessing. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. When supper had ended, he took a cup filled with wine, and he gave thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, as we celebrate this Eucharist, we enter more deeply into the saving work of your Son, the Good Shepherd who leads us along life-giving ways, the Lamb who takes away our sins, the Victor who lives and reigns forever at your side. At, this, at his intercession, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that we may become a living sacrifice, wholly dedicated to your service. And may the same Spirit make us one, one in faith we profess with each other, one with those who minister to your church, especially Todd, our Archbishop, Bernard, our Abbot General, Rob, our Bishop, and one with those who sorrow, one with those who rejoice, one with the sick, the suffering, and the dying, and one with our dearly departed brothers and sisters, whom we commend to your perfect love. When we falter, Father, and our steps leave your path, bring us back to your ways with gentle compassion, so that at the last day, Mary, with Mary, the mother of God, Joseph, her husband, 
and with all their saints, we may take our place among the great cloud of witnesses, united with you for all eternity. And through the merits and mercy of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Through him, with him, in him, to you, God the Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now taught by our Savior's command and formed by the word of God, we are bold to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from all that is evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxieties, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And through this Eucharist, grant us peace and unity of the kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life, to all who with faith receive. Lamb of God, yeah. you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. By the will of the Father and through the working of the Spirit, your death, O Lord, has brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your commands, and never let me be separated from you. Behold the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Holy Lamb of God, who's given his life for the world. Amen. Today as we receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, both physically and spiritually here in the chapel, I pray that you receive him into your heart in a spiritual way, that you would love him and serve him all the days of your life. Come and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Lord, let me receive with a pure heart the heavenly food you have given. May the gift you have given us here on earth sustain us unto everlasting life. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father, renew those you have fed through the Eucharist. Conform our consciences to your holy will. And grant that we ever may experience the redemptive power of your love, not in the sacramental sign, but also in the midst of our daily lives. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Grant you his peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for being here with me today in the chapel and thank you for everybody that watched today what a blessing it is to have everybody here together you know and be as one in faith with that being said this mass on this sunday is now ended may we go in peace to love and serve the lord thanks, thanks be to god, god.